toward the end there, when dad was in the hospital, it was probably at least the last week and a half in the hospital, he was uh, laying in the bed. By that point, the doctor and the nurses said, no more trips to, to even get up out of bed. He can't walk anymore. And he even expressed to Anne at, at one point, he, I think his words were, he said, I feel like I'm in a jail cell and I just want to be unleashed to freedom and I want to see Jesus. And so that certainly could be done and it has been done and he's where he wants to be and face to face with Jesus. Sing this with us. My chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like the blood, His mercy reigns. Unending love. Amazing. David was the most Christ-like example of a man that I've ever known. And he's been a second father, a mentor, and a friend to me throughout my adult life. In addition to seeing David pray for others, I've also shared times with David in personal prayer. I've heard him tearfully confess his own shortcomings and humbly ask God for forgiveness. You know, we've heard a lot of wonderful things about David this past week and today, and they're all true. They're all true. But David had no illusions about the human condition, including his own. He knew that we are all sinners in need of a savior. All sinners saved only by God's grace. That grace gave David the strength and conviction to rise every morning, to share faith, hope, and love across our country and beyond for decades. It kept him strong in Christ through life's toils and snares, and in the end, carried David through his final years with joy, courage, and dignity. <laughs> 